This is Mahalo Wealthy, and I have lent my Kangen water machine. I have a loaner unit. It's an SD501 to a hemp grower out here in Southern Oregon for the last three months, and it's industrial hemp. Um, they have about five acres worth of hemp, and we're about to go see what type of results he got using the Kangen water. So let's go. How did you end up using the water? Did you use it to water with and as a pest, pest management or one or the other? Both. You used it for both? Yeah. Okay. We, we watered um, with the 6.0 water, um, adjusted that pH to 6.5, and then um, we used it both the acidic and basic water for pest management, alternating between the two. Okay. Yeah. And so for watering with the Kangen water, what did you, what did you notice? Well, first thing I probably noticed was not all water is created equal. Um, so we have really clean well water here. Um, the EC and, and the PPMs um, very low. Like it's so clean that it, it it's almost like DI water when you water your plants with it. So we have to um, kind of adjust the water to be able to use it. And so when running it through the Conga machine, um, we get a really clean end product. We don't have the problems that we have if we just use the straight well water with a little leaching of our nutrients. Um, our, you know, when you look at plants and they're praying and they're happy, you know, when we're using just our straight well water, we didn't see a lot of that. Even though our plants aren't suffering from any, you know, nutrient deficiency um, or, or any pest problems. For some reason, the Congo water, the plants just seem to always be happy. They're they're always healthy. Um, also, notice that on the test groups that we did with Congo water, clones rooted faster, okay. um, much faster. Um, growth rates with uh, seedlings were were faster. Um, so yeah, it was it was a huge difference in just what we normally have been doing and using the Kangen water. That's awesome. Did you by any chance take note on how much faster rate well, of growth? And so, I mean, I, yes, I tried to do that. And I, so I generated a, a bit of data from that. Um, I didn't, I, because I did a seed run uh, and not clones, it's gonna be hard for me to extrapolate real data from that because different even within the same seed group if the seed line is not super stabilized um, which most seed lines nowadays are not uh, especially when the, within the hemp genetics we have to work with at this point um, you see such varying degrees of growth between each and individual plant right we now we did do um, so I use a, a easy cloner for cloning right and I was just buying bottled spring water and putting in there um, or using RO water uh, from our spring to put in there and then adjusting the pH and doing all of that. And then I started using the Kangen water in there. So normally I get roots in around 10 days. Okay. And I'm not thrilled with easy cloners and some people have great success with them. I do okay with them. I get, you know, 75%, um, sometimes 50. Okay. I, I don't, I just, I prefer rooting in a medium okay. uh, instead of air cloners. But I did get, the best run that I ever had was when we did the Kangen water. Um, we did two runs in a row with it. Um, all I added to it was, um, what did we add? Uh, apple cider vinegar to adjust the pH. Um, a few drops of mammoth pea microbes and a few drops of an uh, hygrozymer, no, it was SFL 100, enzymatic cleanser. And so um, we had like 99% success roots within seven days using the Kangen water and the easy clone. Oh, wow. Yeah, compared That's to amazing. usually best I do with that pretty much same recipe, just regular RO water, or spring water, or sometimes our well water. You know, I get at best 75%, sometimes 50 Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Okay. Yeah. And so, and you're growing hemp here, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we actually, we got about 30 different strains of hemp. Oh, wonderful. So that's that's yeah. amazing. Okay. And as far as the pest management, what did you notice? Did you have any problems with pests 
during the last three months and well, what was that like? I, I intentionally had problems. Right? Okay. So um, part of my breeding program is selecting for plants resistant to pests. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the state of Oregon in their infinite wisdom decided to spray broad mites all over the county and and Jackson here to control star thistle or some other thistle or whatever, but it's wreaked havoc on cannabis and hemp growers. Right. We also have aphids here and obviously the two spotted spider mite. Those are probably our three biggest pests. Um, so I intentionally infested my plants with two spotted spider mites, intentionally infested my plants with broad mites, and intentionally infested my plants with aphids um, so that I could select those plants most resistant. Now, one thing I noticed in watering with doing soil drench with Congan water is plants became inherently plants, plants otherwise not so resistant to pests built an immunity to pests somehow. Oh right? wow! They, they they slowly became more immune as they got more and more of the water. Um, but then I started to say, okay, well, you know, you were like. Do the, the acidic water and then the basic water back and forth alternate between the two and I did that and I've been using, um, you know, we, we are an organic certified farm and we're, you know, trying to get our biodynamic certification so we have to be very careful about what we spray on our plants. Mm -hmm. We can't use, you know, the more common chemicals out there and I don't think people should be using those chemicals on Absolutely medicine. Not. Yep. So we look, uh, you know, some things that we can use though, um, like Impede uh, is a really common Omri listed. It's it's a soap and it's relatively harmless. It washes off in, in a few days. So that is not very helpful when it comes to broad mites. It's so, so against spider mites and relatively useless against aphids to be honest. I mean, it'll it just doesn't do, do much. Yeah. Um, the only other things that I've found effective are Grandivo Venerate uh, from Moron Biosciences. Those work really well, but they're expensive, especially if you're, you know, spraying uh, every week as part of an IPM. And, you know, so with the Congan water, I found it worked as well or better than Venerate and Grandivo and much cheaper. Right. I mean, you're you know, five pounds of Grandivos, 150 bucks, we'll say, um, two and a half gallons of Venerates, 250 bucks. So How fast do you go through something like that? On a farm this scale, we go through two and a half gallons every, you know, month. Wow. So you're, you're looking at 500 bucks a month. Right. You know, versus just owning a machine. Versus owning a machine, and, you know, and it works. I mean, the spider mite problem, spider mites are probably one of the most difficult pests to get rid of because they, and well so are broad mites, but as a whole, spider mites are just a nuisance. And once you get them, they're very difficult. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, intentionally infested my plants, uh, other than for the good of the breeding program. But uh, they're very difficult to get rid of. And you, when you're working with pesticides uh, or biologicals, you have to fully cover the plant every crack every crevice even the top of the soil sometimes the pots in the room that it's in itself mm -hmm. it's much easier to get that coverage with a small amount of surfacant and the congan water than it is with a product like grand devo which can be kind of thick pasty okay so the spider mites can get away from the you know some of the pesticides and, and they can't get away from that water when you just drink because you can drench. just drench because yep. you don't have to worry about water harming your plant exactly like we that was one thing i've burned plants with grandivo i've burned plants with venerate i've burned plants with impede i've burned plants with just about every pesticide i've ever used even spraying at lighter concentrations than recommended i've never burned a plant with the congan water Wow. I, matter of fact, I would have to say plants usually look happier and healthier after being sprayed, and the you know, and it's eliminating the pests. Right, right. Because um, so, you're sterilizing with the 2.5 strong acidic water, you're sterilizing the yeah, plant. Yeah. And then they just love the 11.5 right. when you go and spray that on yeah. them. And so I would, and then after a treatment, one thing I would do is I would come back with, um, so I make my own lactobacillus cultures, yeah. and I would. You know, I would clean my plant basically. I would spray, um, 
the acidic and basic water and then I would come back with the labs and do foliar and man, the plants love it. Oh, wow. I mean, they loved it. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. And what size um, farm do you have going on here? Well, we'll have about five and a half acres under cultivation this year. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So nice, nice, good size. Yeah, industrial. we'll have around 12,000 plants total. Oh, wow. Okay. So various, you know, like I said, we're, this is a research and development farm for uh, genetics. So we're running a lot of new cultivars. We're running, um, you know, a lot of stuff that we've made over the past year or two. A lot of stuff that's out there, and we're hunting for specific phenos. We're looking for different cannabinoid contents, uh, and that's something I'd like to look at in the future too. Is how how does kangen water in improving the plant's overall health? How does that impact terpene production? How does that impact you know CBD production in our case, or THC production in another farm's case? Right. You know, overall healthier plants seem to produce more flavonoids, terpenoids, cannabinoids. Right. So, you know, what 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 kind of impact does Congan water have on microbial life in the soil? We run living soils here. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was a little worried at first. I was like, well, you know, what what might this do to these living organisms? Mm-hmm. I have not noticed any kind of negative, negative impact at all. Right. Absolutely. It, 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 probably opposite for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think my last question is, would you recommend Kangen water to other growers and why? Oh, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, if you want to grow the same plants you've been growing for however long you've been growing, you know, keep using the same water you've been using. Like I said at the beginning of this, after using the machine, I don't feel all water is created equal. Um, I think you give yourself a little bit of an edge using the Kanga machine because it's, it just generates healthier plants. I mean, you can use it for supplying water and nutrients to, oh, and something else, I think that the Kanga water helps in the bioavailability of the nutrients. I think the physical composition and physical makeup of the Kanga water helps make nutrients more available to the plant, right? right. So you're seeing a faster uptake of nutrients so you're seeing that response and I mean, we're getting faster growth we're getting happier healthier plants we're getting you know just faster clones it, it's just I haven't had any negative experience and I can't see why it, I mean yeah there's no way I wouldn't recommend this to somebody so when you're in flower and you have a bug problem spider mites specifically but broad mites or whatever it becomes exponentially more difficult to rid yourself of that problem because the plant, the bugs have so many more places to hide within the flower of the plant. It's near impossible to get that pesticide to where it needs to be. Water being less viscous than most of the pesticides out there makes it easier to get to and then not only that but you don't have those pesticides dried up the residuals inside your flower you're using water right. so you fill up a five gallon bucket of condom water you dip your plant in it you set it back down you know tomorrow that plant's gonna be dry it's gonna be clean and it's gonna kill the bugs mm -hmm. let's say you use you know a nucom or, or green cleaner you dip your plant in that and you set it back down. It's not, because it's a soapy substance, it's gonna create surface tension and form a bubble, which is gonna prevent it from getting into all the cracks and crevices. Mm -hmm. And then it's also going to leave a residue on your plant that you either have to wash off or deal with. Mm -hmm. And you don't have that with the condom water. That's amazing. So it's, yeah, it's, I mean, hands down, condom water way over pesticides. Right. Any day. It's a game changer. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. And I'll, I'll just add to that and say, you know, for the pest management side of things, when you go into any of your grow shops and look for all your different options on pest management, doesn't matter what you have, none of them you can use to water the plants with. To no, make the plants yeah, healthier. That's so exactly it's, so right. you're getting this two for one that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, what else? What else? Can not only you water your plants, but you can also treat pests. 
Right. And not only are you being able to treat pests, but you treat pests effectively and you guarantee that at the end of the year when you harvest your product and it goes to testing, you're going to have one of the cleanest products out there. Right. That's exactly right. Right. So, I mean, your, your test results are going to come back clean. Yeah. And, and that, can, that can mean the difference between a cell and not. And, and potentially losing your crop if you come out. Absolutely. You know, if you fail your tests. Absolutely. So, and, and you drank the water too, didn't you? I mean, it's good oh, for your oh, health yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. What, did you yeah. notice anything? Oh, yeah, huge difference. Awesome. I, I had, uh, at, at, after a while, like the, for the first week or so, not noticed so much. Then after that, like, I, almost like energy drink. Like, it was crazy. It was right. like, um, yeah. Yeah, and you're working hours out in the sun and the heat. And... Yeah, we, we put in long hours. Yeah. yeah, so that's great. Well, thank you. Thanks yeah. for putting in thank the work you. and, yeah, Absolutely. giving all that data. Yeah, thanks.